learn a lot of different skills in school. How to read, how to write, how to speak with proper grammar and other stuff like that. But even though we spend most of our school years around other students, we actually don't have classes that specifically teach us how to better communicate with them. So today I'm going to give you five basic communication skills that will not only help you learn how to better speak with people, but will also help you connect with them on a deeper level. Try playing around with some of the exercises that I'm going to be giving you also to learn more about how you can develop your skills and have a more productive, enjoyable conversation with other people. So number one, progressive questioning. People really want to know that you're actually listening when they are talking. So try to remember back to a time when you were explaining a topic and the other person was non-existent in the conversation. It was like you were speaking to a brick wall. Asking progressive questions throughout your conversations will not only help you better listen to what the other person is saying, but it will also show that you're truly listening to what they have to say. So here's an exercise. Start by asking someone an open-ended question. It could be a question about the person's family, maybe a recent vacation, or even just their day at work. When they answer you, listen to what they're saying. If you can, pick out a piece of information that you would like to know more about. This is why starting with a broad open-ended question is very important. And then ask for the person to elaborate on that piece of information with another open-ended question. And you can just continue this process. It should sound kind of like this. How was your vacation to Australia? It was wonderful. I saw koalas and learned how to surf and even visited some friends. That's exciting. Where'd you go? I went to Byron Bay. What else did you do in Byron Bay? And the conversation can continue like that. This allows the other person to take the stage and know that you're really listening to what they have to say. It's really important in all relationships, especially romantic relationships. Don't take this to the extreme though during a regular conversation, but use the concept of picking out details, asking for more information, and listening to what the other person has to say. The person will feel more valued, comfortable, and free to speak with you. Skill number two is effective nonverbal communication. Over half of what we communicate through people is not actually what we say, but it's through our body language. Even if we think we are saying something positive, our nonverbal communication and tone that we speak in could lead the person to believe that we're not being genuine. Nonverbal communication is harder to control than the things that we actually say to others. We can, however, be aware of what our nonverbal communication may look like to others and rein in on habits that are misleading. You can learn more about the best type of body language to give off in one of my videos, or you can check out my full psychology of attraction course, which has an entire video outlining dominant and positive body language. So here's an exercise for that. Try to record a conversation that you have with your friend. Well, make sure you have their consent first though. Talk about different subjects, including some that might even make you uncomfortable. When you're watching the video, watch the recording and pay attention to your own body language. How often are you maintaining eye contact? How are you showing the other person that you're actually listening? And what does the positioning of your body say about the interest in your conversation? When you're more aware of your own body language habits, you can hold off on habits that turn people off and instead position your body in a way and your face in a way that shows you are listening. Skill number three is to give feedback. So constructive criticism is not always easy to do. We don't want to hurt anyone's feelings in the process, but proper feedback is often necessary to build a more positive relationship. If someone is not doing their job correctly or doing something to damage your relationship with them, it's better for them to hear this information and this feedback than to continue the negative behavior and think that they're not making a negative impact on others. Here's a little exercise. If you're offering feedback to someone, practice giving something called a compliment sandwich. Start off what you have to say with a positive thing about the person. Let them know that you really appreciate their work and what they have done for you as a friend. Then tell them what they can work on in a positive way and then end it with another positive thing that you appreciate about them. So a compliment sandwich should sound like this. Hey Nancy, I really appreciate that you're always ready to work and have a very passionate attitude. That spirit is exactly what we're looking for at work. I have noticed that sometimes this passion can come off as overexcitement to customers who may not feel the same passion yet. Customers who do not know much about our company may be overwhelmed when they first walk into the shop. So I would suggest taking a moment to mirror the customer's energy and gradually bring them up to your level of excitement. You are so knowledgeable about the company and our products and you're a great asset to our team. This allows the person to walk away with the feedback but is cushioned by two compliments that help them feel validated and more eager to work on the traits and skills that they have to receive feedback on. Skill number four is actually receiving feedback. On the other hand, you will not be able to improve at work or your relationships or your job if you do not receive feedback well. We all know someone who cannot respond well to feedback. Maybe they are overly emotional or defensive or would take the feedback personally and let it damage your relationship. We are less willing to give someone feedback in the future if they do not take it well in the first or the second time. And this can create a barrier that inhibits the other person from growing and improving through the feedback that you're going to give them and constructive criticism. In most cases, feedback is not a personal insult to your character. Feedback is often given because the person has confidence and trust that you actually want to improve and do your best. If you can keep this in mind while you're receiving feedback, you may be able to look at and listen to the situation from a more objective position. Here's an exercise. The best way to improve your ability to receive feedback is just to practice. Role play with a close friend or a colleague who knows you very well and ask them just to give you honest feedback. Take a moment and notice how you're feeling 
doing while you're receiving the feedback? Are you actually listening to the other person or are you waiting to respond and be defensive? Are your responses led by certain emotions and why might you be feeling this way about receiving the feedback? Humility is really important at this point. Once you have responded to the other person, ask them for their assessment of your response. Do they feel that you actually listen to the feedback? Do they think that you will genuinely apply this feedback to your performance at work or your relationship? And also, what did your body language, tone, and words say about the feelings towards the feedback? I suggest continuing to practice until you're comfortable receiving feedback with a calm demeanor and the ability to listen without immediately jumping to a defense. This skill takes a lot of time but is very vital to being able to grow in many areas of your life. And the last skill I have for you is something called mirroring energy. This one might sound a little bit weird, but Patsy Roddenberg is a voice coach and theater director who is best known for her work discussing energy circles. In presence, she describes three circles of energy. The first is a space where people are focused inward. They're thinking very hard and not paying attention to what is happening outside of them or their own space. The second circle of energy is a happy medium. The person is present, they're observant, and they're responding to what they see and hear in the moment. Second circle energy should be the goal for anyone who's trying to have an efficient conversation, whether they're trying to make a sale, score a date, or just interview for a job. And the third circle is the opposite. People with the third circle energy are focused outward, but they're still not paying attention to what's happening in that space. They may be boisterously telling a story or talking someone's ear off without actually listening to the response or reading their body language. When you can meet someone where they are and guide them to a second circle of energy, you have a much more productive conversation while making each party feel comfortable. So here's a little exercise to help with that. When you begin your interaction with someone, take time to assess what circle of energy are they in. Are they focused inward or outward too much or in the present moment? Once you have assessed their circle of energy, mirror that energy and give them space to move into the second circle of energy. If they have just arrived in your office and are in a first circle of energy, maybe offer them coffee or a tea and give them a moment to come to the present moment. If they're in the third circle, match their enthusiasm, but bring them down a bit to the present moment by introducing the purpose of your conversation. If you need to, role play different situations where someone is in a first, second, or third circle of energy. Practice assessing and mirroring energy until you feel comfortable tapping into where people are when they first walk into a room. Also, before I end this video, do you remember that course that I mentioned earlier? If you're interested in how to get more girls to like you, how to read her body language during the date, or just general attraction skills, I've actually created an entire video course called The Psychology of Attraction for Someone Exactly Like You. I've read a bunch of books on dating tips, plus eight psychology textbooks, and then put everything that works to actually get, find, and eventually keep your dream lady into a course with animated videos just like this one. You can check it out and the amazing stories other guys have had by taking the course with the link in the description along with a coupon code for over half off today if you use that link. Thank you guys so much for watching this video and I hope you learned something that will help you better your own communication skills.